worshiping with us at Johnston River of Life. Those of you who were brave enough to get out in the cold and those of you who weren't, I hope that you still stuck your head out early enough to see the sun dogs that were bright and shining and beautiful this morning. We are going to have a lot of fun at worship. We're going to celebrate. We're going to proclaim Jesus Christ as King and we're going to really gather together in the spirit of worship. I do want to point out a couple of announcements this week. Uh, small group tonight at Hopkins Grove, we're not going to have that. But we will be having um, the upcoming small group for the Richard Rohr study. That met last Monday. It will not meet tomorrow. It's every other week. But we will meet the following Monday night, and we'll be at Java Joe's on Douglas. And that's a joint study between us and Trinity. And it's so far, we've had a lot of fun with it. If you missed the first one, it was really kind of an introduction. So everybody can still fit into that. We would love to have you join us for that. The other big one that I want to make sure you're aware of, please make sure that you get signed up for the Fresh Expressions Conference that is in Ankeny, and that is on the 15th. Um, you can find the link that is on the emails that get sent out, or you can find it on the conference website. I would love to have as many people there as possible. Um, we are going to uh, have a good representation and talk about our future and our vision and dreams as we move forward. Also, the Laity Summit, which is coming up on February 1st, anybody who's interested in that, um, please get signed up on the webpage as well. I think that's it for announcements this morning. I'm going to have you jump up. We're going to jump into worship and start with this song that uh, is full of energy. The keys know who you Thank you. 
pray with me this morning? Holy and mighty God, we come to worship you in spirit and in truth this morning. We pray that you would fill this place. Pour your spirit out upon us as we come to seek you with all that we are. May you truly fill this place like a lighthouse. Fill our hearts and our minds. Give us a vision to see you, to be drawn close to you. And Lord, as you send us out into the world, help us to be that same lighthouse to shine the light of your glory, of your grace, of your love and forgiveness into the lives of others. Lord, God, this in your holy, holy, holy name. Amen. I'm going to invite you to a, a new song this morning. And I just invite you to think for a moment about how there are times in life that we face things that are difficult. We face things where literally... The fear that is imposed upon us by circumstance or situation seems to be so overwhelming that we, we lose hope. We lose sight of God. We, we lose sight of even those who support us and love us. And this song reminds us that no matter what we face, that our fear, it doesn't stand a chance in the presence of God's love. So let us worship and be reminded of that very thing. Darkness rose from the world Brothers and sisters, our fear, the difficulties that we experience in life doesn't stand a chance when we stand in the very presence of a loving and almighty God. 
That's the good news. I invite you to take a moment. We're just going to gather yes and shake hands. And I know some of you on, that are on Facebook Live, we are glad you're worshiping. And so you need to turn in the room and give high fives to whoever's next to you. But let's uh, greet each other in the name of Jesus Christ this morning. Us to send up your angels to watch over us daily. 
And all God's children said, Amen. All right, the kids are headed off to H2Go. And again, thank you to uh, the dedicated youth leaders that we have that are willing to be here on such a cold morning. And the kids that were here as well, that's a, that's a praise the Lord. As they're headed off that direction, we're going to take a moment and... Uh, and uh, give thanks to God, I share our joys and our concerns. So how have you seen God at work in your life this week? And what joys and concerns can we lift up in prayer today? Yeah. Woo! How, um, is this exchangeable? Can you give it to a friend? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So praise the Lord. What better day to earn a free trip to Hawaii than on this particular weekend when we are freezing? <laughs> praise the Lord. Yeah. Any others? Yeah. So last night, Catherine was working at Children's downtown, and a kid came in and had swallowed a ball, and they thought he was going to die, but they did the surgery, took the ball out, and he's going to be fine. <laughs> praise the Lord. Those circumstances can be very scary. Um, and being working in a hospital setting, you encounter things that are just um, horrifying for a mother, for a, um, a nurse, a doctor. Um, but praise the Lord for all of those times that God intervenes and that and that good prevails. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure I even know. Yeah. How many are out of electricity? So prayers for all of those who are finding themselves dealing directly with the weather, whether their electricity or heat is out, whether they're homeless, um, looking for a place to stay and stay warm. Um, it's always a dangerous time of year, and we sometimes take for granted the gifts that we have in our, our homes and safety there. So prayers for everybody, yeah. Pray for the team of pilgrims. We have another walk to Emmaus in three weeks. And if you want to know more, see me, or see Matt, or see Dave. Yep. The church. So prayers for all the pilgrims who will be going to walk to Emmaus in about three weeks. And um, I think we've got a couple, at least one person who's interested. And anybody else who has questions or would like some information, we would love to share that with you um, and encourage you to attend. I think everyone here would enjoy it and benefit from it. So let us know if you're interested. Yeah. Just a lot of people prayers for farmers and those with outdoor jobs and stuff. Yes, for, the, for all of the farmers that are dealing with the weather and um, how the smallest thing really affects their day-to-day -day life. So prayers for everybody as they um, adapt and, and work through that. I just prayers for my friend Barbie. Her mom passed away unexpectedly this week. Okay, so prayers for, uh, for Barbie whose mother passed away this week. Um, and several people who um, have been experiencing health issues or been in the hospital this week, several from Hopkins Grove as well, and those who have lost loved ones over the last couple weeks, um, it is, it's so hard. And so just prayers for God's peace and presence to abide with, with them. Let's enter into a time of prayer together. Holy and mighty God, you have heard all of our prayers you know our hearts. You have blessed us with so much that we have to pause to take time and appreciate the blessings that fill our lives. Lord, for the fact that we are here this morning, the fact that we likely came from a warm home and drove in a warm car, Lord, we are blessed. Lord, we pray that you'd be with those who are struggling with, with heat, with the difficulty of weather in this circumstance. For those who have lost electricity or heat or those who are homeless and find themselves uh, looking for a way to stay warm in the midst of this, this horrible temperature. Lord, we pray that you be with the farmers, those whose livelihood puts them out in the middle of this weather. We pray for safety. We pray that you would abide with them as they um, encounter whatever challenges may be in front of them and sustain them, strengthen them, and surround them with support from family and communities. 
Lord, we do pray for those who've lost loved ones. We pray that you would wrap them in your arms of mercy, comfort, and of peace. Help them to know that you stand beside them in the midst of the greatest of difficulties. Lord, we pray for those who will be attending Walk to Emmaus, and we pray for your blessing. We pray that you would anoint them with with your holy touch. Help them to know your grace anew and your love in bright new ways in their life. Holy God, we pray that you would uh, watch over and protect everyone who's traveling today. For those who have stayed home, help them to enjoy uh, the weather at home and the comfort of maybe even staying in their pajamas. Lord, thank you for time together as families. Pray that you would help us to celebrate that and enjoy that. Lord, as we gather here, we lift up our prayers for our community, for the world. We pray for those who are in leadership. We pray that you would grant them your wisdom. We pray that you would pour over them your your heart of peace and of love for all people. We pray that you would be with those who serve, those who put their lives on the line and care for others, protect others, whether in the military or police or fire departments. Lord, we pray that you would have your hand of blessing upon them. Lord, for the unspoken prayers of our hearts, those trials or difficulties that are too hard for us to share or maybe too difficult for us to even speak the words ourselves, for those difficulties, Lord, we turn them over to you. And we pray this morning that your presence and your spirit would abide with us and comfort us, give us strength and direction and help us to follow your path. Lord God, we submit all of these things to you and we come now in the name of Jesus Christ and pray together the prayer which you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time, let us take a moment to return to God his tithes and our offerings. Amen. Do I have a scripture reader this morning or a volunteer? We always like those. Brian, you got it. Today's reading is from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horus, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. 
When the Lord saw that, he turned aside the sea. God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come here. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I was told that uh, last night that I was told that I should preach this sermon barefoot this morning. What I didn't say is I've preached barefoot before on a different passage, how lovely on the mountain are the feet of them who bring good news, um, that particular passage. Um, then I served communion after I showed the children my feet in the children's sermon and so forth, and I had people comment about that. So I decided not to preach barefoot this morning. But I did decide to share a, another very personal story um, when I first came into uh, ministry, began youth ministry at Kimball Avenue United Methodist Church up in Waterloo, and um, I remember I was a little green around the ears yet. I was still figuring things out, and um, I was a little scared, a little nervous. You know, what am I doing out in front of people and building relationships? But I did know one thing I needed to do when I first got there was to to meet the families, to get into people's homes and experience their life and hear their stories and begin to build relationships. And so I was, I was going around and knocking on doors and remember very clearly. And I remember it was, it was a little difficult getting to their house. I, I drove up and found that literally the whole street in front of their house was torn up and being redone. Construction in Iowa. Hey, that you can just expect. But I had to park clear around on the other side, and then I had to walk around, and it was kind of this, this messy, you know, construction, all that stuff. And I, I get up to the house and knock on the door, and, and they greet me, and they're just so excited. I'm still nervous, kind of this kind of thing. They walk me right in and sit me down in the living room, and we begin talking. We have this great conversation, and, and I learn a lot about them. And I think they learned a little bit about at least who I was and, and what my uh, understanding of ministry was and how I was going to be engaged with the kids and the families. And I thought, oh, this went really good. And, and so I, I prayed with them. And I remember I was walking out the door. And as I'm doing this, I, I look down. And I realize that when I had walked in, I was so nervous I forgot to take my shoes off and I just walked through a bunch of mud and I'm on white carpet and I've got these footprints leading into their house and I'm walking out going, oh my goodness, what do I do? I just, just made a horrible mistake and I didn't even know what to say. In fact, I walked out going, bye, thanks. <laughs> that was, I have to give them credit because nothing was ever said about that. Nothing was ever brought up again until my celebration of ministry and my leaving. And then as I'm leaving, this is about seven years later, the father of the family gets up in front of everybody and just says, hey, I just have to share one experience. And, you know, we got really involved and we love doing youth ministry with Pastor Craig, but when he first came to our house and walked in the door, he walked through the construction and he walked right in on our white carpet and left footprints that we had to spend hours cleaning up. And I'm sitting there just embarrassed, going, oh my goodness, if I, if I prayed this story would never come out. Why did this story have to come out? But I remember him saying, we weren't sure what to think about this kid. And they said, he turned out to be okay. Not only that, but the story came to me, it came to remind me over and over that we make footprints in each other's lives. Every relationship that we have leaves footprints in our life. Sometimes they're, they're footprints that remind us of difficult times or, or bad times. Sometimes they're footprints that, that are good memories and, and to help support us and build us up to be the people that we're intended to be. And that particular circumstance, they could look at and say that I left footprints in their life and in their family that was a positive experience. The space we share with each other is holy, isn't it? When we come together, e even though we leave footprints, that space is intended to be a holy space, a space where we can get intimate, a space like Moses where we can take our shoes off and, and really get to know one another and feel comfortable in that space. You know, when I read this passage, and, and read it many times, I'm sure you're familiar with this passage, but there's a couple things that really stick out to me. First of all, in this particular passage, you notice Moses is seeing something pretty outstanding, 
pretty out of the norm. It caught his attention. I mean, he'd been shepherding now for 40 years, and all of a sudden he's seeing something that he's never seen before. And so he decides, in fact, I, I like the way it says it, he decides to turn aside. I mean, he, he had a task. He was doing something. He was going one direction, and he saw this magnificent sight, and he decides to turn aside and see what is happening. Did you notice that it was only when Moses decided to turn aside that God noticed and spoke up? He said, I will turn aside and I will see this great sight. Why is this bush burning? And when the Lord saw that he had turned aside, God called to him out of the bush and said, Moses and Moses. And then what did Moses do? These great words that I think we should all learn to speak a little bit more with, with God and with others. He said, here I am. Here I am, God. What a great response. Do you ever wonder if you just get so busy in life that you're just going about things, you're on your task and you're headed in a certain direction, and you might notice that God is doing something miraculous or amazing over here, but you don't have time to stop. Or you may notice that something strange or off is happening, but you don't take time to turn aside from the busyness of your life. Have you ever asked yourself the question if maybe, maybe you're missing an opportunity? Because if you were to take time and turn aside, God might say, hey, Craig, hey, Craig. Or hey, each one of us. And then he goes on to say, when Moses says, here I am, Lord, he says, what's God say? He says, Take your shoes off, Moses. This is holy ground. God invites us in. When we take time to turn aside, when we see what God's doing, God invites us in. Say, take your shoes off. Take time to sit with me and to be in this holy space with me. Abide with me in this moment to, to see what I'm doing. We're in this sermon series. We're talking, about, we're talking about living life at God's speed. We're talking about slowing down. We're talking about seeing things from a different perspective. We're talking about being in the presence of God and really sharing the presence of God with one another in the midst of life. That looks different than just running around our hectic life full pace and not taking time to turn aside. I think one of the big things we need to learn in the midst of our life is we need to take time to put down the cell phones. We, we need to take time to stop running from place to place. We need to take time and sit, take time to take our shoes off and be in the presence of God. Let's talk about distractions for just a minute. No matter what you're doing, you will find distractions. And today, specifically, I believe that in our relationship with God, we find distractions, things that get in the way that keep us from truly engaging in our relationship with God, or we're just so busy that the only time we find time to check in with God is, what, Sunday morning. Matt and Julie, in, in their study guide and talking about their experience in, in Methlech, Scotland, the, you, we saw the video a couple weeks ago, and if you're looking for today's video, which there's a 10-minute video clip that Matt does, including uh, even an, an a little bit of conversation with N.T. Wright, which is one of today's big theologians. You can find it on the YouVersion Bible app, by the way. Get in there, you can click, and you will find the link to today's little 10-minute video clip to catch more information there. But in their study guide, they talk about their own experience in Methlech. They moved to this small community, 200 or so, and when they got there, they're living in a parsonage, which is, you know, 150 yards from the church, um, I've lived in those where they're really close. But one of the traditions of the community was that the church bell was like the center of the community. So the church bell went off every hour. I mean, in the middle of the night, every hour. And they shared how when they first moved there, they recognized that they were having problems with this bell. 
they were not appreciating the bell at 3 a.m. in the morning. They were calling that a distraction to their sleep. And I think we can all agree with that. I said that with time, they got used to the bell. Not only did they get used to the bell, but they found a way to turn their distraction into something that centered them, something that allowed them to be rooted in the presence of their community and to be rooted in the presence of God. What they began to do is they began to say this phrase, Lord, here I am. Every time they hear the bell, they would allow themselves to be present and they would say, here I am. One Lent, the, the whole community, the church community just decided that they would all commit to noon. Every day when they would hear the noon bell, they would stop, pause, whatever they were doing with whomever they were with, and the whole community knew this, so there was times that they were interacting with different people, and the noon bell would ring, and they'd all stop, and they'd say, Lord, here I am. And it helped them to acknowledge that in whatever relationship they were in, whoever they were taking time with or working with, having lunch with, that God was present with them in the midst of that. They turned a distraction into, into a possibility, into a rootedness in a relationship. You know, I thought back to my um, muddy footprints again. I thought to myself, that family could have let those muddy footprints be a distraction. They could have let that be a barrier in their relationship with me. They could have just simply said, that was the rudest thing I have ever seen. And they would have been right. <laughs> you can laugh about it, because I've laughed about it and cried about it. And you can look back on your life and think, oh my goodness, did I really do that? And this is me being vulnerable and honest and sharing some of it. That's, cr that's the crazy part. Uh, it's going to be on live stream forever. You know, they could have let later, it gets brought up, but not as a negative. It gets brought up as more of a positive. Those footprints are footprints that we will remember for the rest of our life. They're footprints that meant something that will be with us and that have shaped us and formed us? Do you understand, all of us in our relationships leave footprints in the lives of other people. Other people are leaving footprints in our lives, and as a church community, we're leaving footprints in the lives of each other, or we're choosing to, you know, only dot Sunday morning on occasion. We decide how much of that engagement we're going to have, but the real thing that we need to be thinking about is how do we decide to be more present in our relationship with God? Will we make the commitment on a Sunday morning, every Sunday morning, to say, it's time to turn aside. It's time to, to let life go its direction and work and busyness go its direction. I'm going to turn aside and I'm going to take time in the presence of God. I'm going to essentially take my shoes off and be in a holy place with my community. Will we take time during our week, whether it's at noon or whether it's first thing in the morning or in the evening, will we take time to really experience the holy with God? Will we find time in a small group to engage and allow their spirits to engage with our spirit as we commune with, in fellowship with God? Will we take the marks that other people leave Will we take the distractions and the barriers in our life and turn them into something that becomes a holy experience? How can we, like Moses, make time for God, time for others, time for community, and transform a distraction into a holy space? I think... This is one of the challenging things for our society. Our culture has become something that just moves too fast. We don't know how to slow down. We don't know how to truly experience presence with each other. 
Matt in his video and otherwise, he talks about how, how Scotland was a blessing to him, that it forced him to slow down and experience relationships in a different way. N.T. Wright talks about how we need to recognize the ways that our culture it, it would have benefited us and can benefit us, but we also need to understand where it's diminishing us and how we can essentially put aside the things that diminish us and transform them into something that is truly the presence of the holy. So today I challenge you to think about how you are truly going to step into the holy. I'm going to put a couple of questions up on the screen. And I believe the people even on live stream will be able to see these. And we're going to give you just a little bit of time. I'm going to pray and I'm going to give you some time just to look through these questions and think about them. And I encourage you to ask God either to give you one question to ponder this week or to give you one action that you can take this week that will lead you into that deeper, full presence of God. Let us pray. Holy and mighty God, we do thank you. We thank you for your presence, for doing miraculous and amazing things around us. We thank you that you are patient with us and you invite us to turn aside. Lord, we pray that you would give us the courage to turn aside, to take time to be in your presence, to take our shoes off, to truly experience the fullness of your holy. And Lord, as we continue in worship now, we pray that you would impress this upon our hearts and our minds. Holy Spirit, come. Fill this place. Fill our hearts. Transform our hearts so that these words are true, so that there's nothing worth more. Nothing could ever come close or compare to your presence, Lord. Let us hunger and thirst to be in that holy space, to share that holy space with one another. We pray this, Lord, in your name.
presence of God. May the beauty of God overflow in your life this week. May no matter what you face, may you remember the beauty of God's love that surrounds you and his beautiful name. And whatever time you find yourself struggling or hurting or broken or in the darkness of difficulty, remember one thing. To call out on the name of Jesus Christ. The name of the one who is beautiful. The name of the one who will sustain you and strengthen you and abide with you. Oh, what a beautiful name. Let us sing. You are the one at the beginning. One with God at the Lord most high. In glory in creation. Now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name.
we have victory. We have peace. We have hope. We have love and grace, forgiveness, mercy, redemption. In the name of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, no matter what you face, I invite you this week to take your shoes off. To be in the presence of one another. To be in the presence of family. To slow down enough to turn aside and be in the presence of God. Go. As those who are called, those who are loved, and those who are claimed in the name of Christ, go and be the presence of Christ to others. Go now with hope and joy, peace, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Amen. And we will see you next week. Hopefully warmer.